back to the sweetest place on earth. We are here at Hershey Park. We've actually been here for a little bit. The park is a little bit busy today. So we decided that rather than waiting for the Great Bear or Candemonium and having to burn two hours at a time in lines, why not check out this amazing experience here at Zoo America? Zoo America is a privately owned zoo, also run by the Hershey Company, that is included in everyone's park ticket here. So what do you think, guys? I'm excited. You ready to roll? I haven't been to Zoo America in a long time. Yeah. So many cool, interesting animals. Great wildlife. Are there any feedings? Do you know? I love when you're here. You know, I think you, you actually. I think you can. I think. I think. We'll find out. <laughs> we're going to find out. All right, guys. Well, we're looking forward to getting started. Tim, Katie, Sam, Jay, the theme park foodie. We do things like this. So, as you guys will have seen if I didn't whip the shot, is you get a stamp on your hand as you're on your way in. Then you cross this pretty cool covered bridge area. And once you do that, you're in, I think, the reptile house? Is that where you come out? Uh, yeah, some house, I think. It's reptile house. Reptile house main entrance area. Yeah, there's a couple indoor exhibits. Ooh, bright suddenly. There's a couple indoor exhibits and a couple outdoor exhibits. This isn't a huge zoo, but it is very inclusive. You've got bears, you've got prairie dogs, you've got aviation, you've got... Aviation, <laughs> aviation is, is not, not birds. Animal. Aviary, that's what I meant to say. They've got airplanes? <laughs> I was mistaken, guys. It's actually the gift shop that you enter first here, which is a really tight, compact little gift shop, but it's got a lot of little creatures hiding in it. We're going Southern Swamp? Southern Swamp. We got our first friends without having to go very far here. Jay, I thought you made a friend for a second there. Oh my gosh, they're like doing a little dance. Yeah, it's interesting. They kind of like, seems like there's a parade here. This, however, is immediately my worst nightmare. There's a cotton mouth in here somewhere, but I do not see it. I have a love-hate relationship with snakes. I love to look at them in movies and films and books and pictures. I love to see them behind glass, but when I can't see them, or worse, when I'm out in the wild with them, my worst nightmare. Can't see them. Everyone stand here. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> there. Yeah, I've contributed. Yay! Hooray! We're doing our part. Teamwork makes the dream work. Stop the press. <laughs> Hello, friends. How's your day going? Are you okay? Are, are you alive? He's trying to avoid being filmed, but I still see you, sir. There is a reason that they tell you to go a certain way, and the reason is the path that they've laid for you here, you get the best opportunity to see every kind of animal on your route. Eventually, it does become a big loop, so you'll eventually see everything anyway, but the vantage points that they give you here are worth taking advantage of. We've now made our way into the Great Southwest, and first up is the Beaded Lizard, which I used to call a Gila Monster, but I think they might be two different kinds of creatures. I don't know, everything I know about science I learned from the Magic School Bus. This is actually quite cool how they have this kind of open air enclosure where the non-dangerous creatures can kind of run around a little bit. If you're looking really closely, you can see an owl, you can see an armadillo, you can see a tortoise. They're all kind of tucked out of the way though because they know how to get out of the heat. Apparently this used to be the birdhouse back in the day, but I guess it got too difficult to maintain. You can see it used to have that fencing in the back, which I guess it's a little hard to tell on the camera, but currently, no fencing at all. Yeah, this, the greenhouse effect in here, it makes sense they turned this into the desert because the way the sun comes through, you gotta figure it gets pretty hot in here. It's pretty warm from the outside. And now for the part that's impossible to film, the desert in darkness. Oh, it actually looks pretty good. That's the canon difference. Here he comes. <laughs> Look at this. You won't be able to tell what it is unless it moves because it kind of blends in pretty well. But there's a vampire bat right here on the ground. Just chilling. These critters are called coaties and they are the cutest things. They're like mixes between raccoons and lemurs. And they have big sniffers. I think he can hang from his tail. Can he? He's about to, if so. Kind of is. Yeah. Back feet. Oh, oh, there we go. Aww. 
Wow. This is like a Pokédex entry right here. The owl's right on top of their own sign. I feel you, bro. <laughs> I feel you. This may actually be the coolest part of the Zoo America experience. They actually do have Hershey bears in here. There's this indoor area where the bears can swim. If you're lucky and you happen to walk up on them at bath time, you can get some really amazing views from this little enclosure. Otherwise, you're most likely to probably catch them around the outside bend. So if you see a bunch of people outside and nobody inside, it's probably because the bears are over there. Well, Mr. Bear is here, but he's not feeling very social today. In fact, he's so antisocial that the vultures have begun to gather thinking that he might be deceased. Oh dear. I promise that so long as I continue to draw breath, I will continue to make dad jokes and puns. This is kind of cool actually. This is not formally part of the zoo, I don't think. It's not an exhibit, but this area has been well tended specifically to cultivate monarchs. You can see a little bit of butterfly action down there. Not a ton, because I think we're off season for monarchs, but it's really cool that they went the extra mile here to create an environment where they could thrive. We come now to big sky country. Whoop! Off like a shot. That one has not moved in a minute. Yeah, he's just standing there he's like a statue. really frozen. frozen. I think maybe if I don't move, they won't see me. <laughs> this is the American elk has some relation to a deer, but looks a lot more like a moose than a deer. Second you go to find him, that's when he feels like getting shy. What? Did anyone else see that? He, he just vanished. He just he straight up. What happened? Well, here is our answer to why the vultures are bothering the bears. Because the federal government hasn't yet arrived to remove them. Yo, are we... What's, what's going on down here? They're fighting. It's a vulture war. Some of these vultures seem to be taking kind of like a proud stance to like fend off fights from others. Who are all kind of, uh, yeah, see, look at that. Dude just spread his wings to show that he's not up for it. And that nobody needs to bother him. Look at all these out here. I'll grant you that these are probably not good for the environment and they do need to be removed since there are quite a few of them, but this is really fascinating to look at. It's, I swear, it's like they're all like unified in a movement here. It is cool too that the monorail passes right over Zoomerica, so if you're riding from the park in, you can catch some good views. I've actually seen the bears from the monorail once before. This whole footprint of this zoo is not very large. It's actually very compact and it doesn't take long to make it all the way around the circuit. But if you take your time and you look at absolutely everything, there's more here than you think there is. And Sam came prepared with some quarters so we can feed the geese. There you go. I'll try to get some to the ducks too because the geese are a little bit more competitive. Woo! There we go. All right, what are you worried about? Well, I said like if I ever went camping with Sam, I'd get worried that she thought like the wolves were dogs and I'd come out and she'd be like petting them like Sam. <laughs> but counter argument, you could wind up taking home a bunch of wolves. <laughs> become part of the pack. Yeah, you become the alpha. <laughs> so you'd think this would be the vulture pen given the number of vultures in it, but it's actually the porcupine. <laughs> this poor guy's asleep on the rock like all the other critters, just trying to enjoy his day. And over here we have this vulture movement. It really is kind of getting out of hand a little bit. And the best part about returning to Hershey Park after a brief Zoo America visit is that you can always stop by and grab a couple mini donuts to round out the day. Mmm, I can right. see her eyes light up. That was the exact opposite reaction that you had to the, the hummus. hummus. Yeah, so. peanut butter hummus and chocolate These are really good. I'm still full from chocolate I here. almost don't want to share them with you guys. <laughs> I mean, I can respect them. Oh. Ah. All right. Oh wow. The marshmallow is banging. We've had a very marshmallow filled day. So <laughs> Better have another one just to be sure. <laughs> That just about wraps up our Hershey Park day. We've got one more thing we want to do, but first we wanted to give you a proper wrap up on Zoo America. I thought it was great. 
truly did. I yeah, think it was so cute. Especially as like a free experience that you tack on to the normal park admission. It's something that families can do. It's something that's enjoyable for everyone. Yep. And under normal circumstances, you can also get food in there. So it's a nice place to get away from the crowds a little bit. So thank you all for joining us. And thank you, okay, Jay and Sam, for, for joining us as well. Oh, well, actually, you guys invited us out. Oh, so. yeah. Thanks for coming. <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you for having Thanks us. Thanks for meeting us here. <laughs> And for now, guys, we're going to go ahead and pack it in. Every day is a new adventure. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.